So what are you guys? We are the Sportwood family! So are you guys real Sportwood MCAT students? Hell yeah! Hey guys, I wish we could be out there so we could meet in person. Uh, my wife and I usually get a chance to visit, you know, sometime in November before the actual class starts. But uh, this year got super hectic. We are beta testing all the stuff for the 2015 MCAT, getting everything else and ready. on top of that, I think your uni exams have just passed, so it's kind of hectic for everyone. So I think this year probably the best plan is we'll just start up when we get there, I think around December 10th, okay? So that's the plan. Um, let me talk briefly about the, what the course is like. So obviously the main reason we're going to do this, right, so that you can get the best score possible. So the idea is in a standard course, right, in our standard course, it takes anywhere from about 10 weeks 20 weeks to run through a cycle, okay? I won't go into all the details because we can talk about it in person, but in that 10 to 20 weeks, the idea is something like this. Uh, of course, we're going to work on content, but we're going to, aside from this, we're going to work on problem-solving strategies, okay? Uh, because our time frame is super compressed, we got to do it all, you know, slapped together. So we're going to kind of do it all at once. The other big difference is while they get 10 to 20 weeks, and we're going to compress it somewhere around the order of like three to four weeks. When I meet with a standard cycle, you know, we joke around, you know, uh, hang out, do stuff like that, right? So it's kind of a mellow pace. You do about three to four hours per day, okay? Uh, our cycle, you know, hopefully we'll get some time to joke around and relax, but it's going to be more like roughly six hours a day, okay? okay. Not it won't be that bad because we'll get plenty of breaks. There'll be some rest time, and some days we might not even need all six hours, but you should plan for about six hours per day, okay? The other thing that's going to be a little bit different is this. Normally, of course, you know, you have the physics, the GCHEM, the bio, and the OCHEM. Okay. Uh, normally, the setup is we have to go through everything. I found from previous years that the way to optimize our time, especially since you guys are taking med school courses and are pretty, you know, pretty up with the bio, the best thing to do is pretty much cut out the bio. We won't cut out entirely. When we do the workshop portion, we're going to spend time, you know, talking about stuff. If you guys have questions at any point, we can do a special, you know, pick out a special day and dedicate it to bio. But for the most part, you guys are over prepared for the bio. Okay, so your med school classes are more than enough for this. Okay, in fact, it's kind of funny. Um, last year's group. It turned out they were so prepared on the bio that the bio was kind of difficult for them. Okay, we'll, we'll talk more about that. But what we're going to do is this. We're going to cut out the le bio in the lessons formally. That we, we'll reserve like maybe one or two days in case we need to catch up, okay, or go over stuff. And we're going to focus on what most people have trouble with. But again, it's up to you. Once we actually get there, if you're like, you know what, you feel really good with the GCAM, why don't we spend some more time on bio, then we'll definitely do that, okay? But if you're serious about doing well, because this has definitely worked, even though it's in compressed time frame, we've had a lot of successful students. Uh, Bonnie from last year, she did fantastic. So um, let's talk a little bit about the strategy. So you'll get your books. So uh, one is the physical sciences book. That should cover physics and GCAM. The other is the biological sciences book, which is bio and OCHEM. And of course, there's a verbal book. Okay? Verbal, I want to work with you in person, because ver verbal is my favorite thing. But it's all technique, so we kind of have to do it together. Okay. For the bio, since um, we're not going to spend as much time together on bio unless you want to, uh, for prep beforehand. We're going to send you the biological sciences books, and I think what you do is peruse the lessons. Okay, so just skim the topics, make sure you're comfortable. Once you're done with that, run through the bio fundamentals. So that's basically your homework. Don't worry about the passages in there, just the fundamentals. So that's a question set, okay, or the question sets. And it's bio, bio fundamentals uh, one through four, okay? They're mellow, they're not that bad, but they give you a feel for what the test is like. So go ahead and run through these. And I guess your job is between now and December 10th, get through all of these if you can. If you guys have any questions, you can definitely email me beforehand. But um, I think the best thing is build up a list of questions so that when we actually get there, we can go over them together, okay? Okay, so let me think. What else do we want to do here? So there are two other videos. I put the links down below. You can check them out. Those are general demos I've done just to show people how the MCAT actually works, okay? But, you know, since I've got the time. Oh, by the way, uh, they're not officially tied with the university. You know, last year when we did this, it was actually run as a course. So students had to be in the course and then actually give them a grade for it. This year it's a little bit more mellow. I won't give you a grade I for it. I still encourage you to do the homework because it's one of the best ways to make sure you're kind of up to speed with everything. Okay? But, um, beep. Okay. So feel free to email any questions you guys have. The email will be down below this video. Um, but uh, let me think. So when my wife and I are down there, we'll, we'll be there in person. So there won't be an issue. 
Okay. Right now, though, it's, it's kind of hectic, but there's a bigger staff. So there's myself, my wife, the office staff, uh, some of the corporate staff. Well, the corporate staff will always check the email anyway. So you know, I might as well put it in the video. It's going to be info at swartbirdprep.com. Okay. And if you have a question for me about the homework, just put attention John. Okay. So, given the time frame, it's actually, it actually works in our favor. You might think with not as much time, it's going to be much harder, but the theme is you work with the basic principles, because that's really all the MCAT ever tests. Okay? What makes it difficult, though, is the framing, the setting. So they put it, you in unfamiliar situations, and it's your job to think through it. Okay? It sounds really easy in principle to do, very hard to do in actual practice. Okay? So a lot of it's really the psychology you bring to bear, like your psychological state, I guess. So um, let's talk about this. You know, what makes the MCAT tough isn't the fact that you have really complicated science, because it's not really that bad. What makes the MCAT tough is you have simple principles embedded in passages that look much more complicated than they are. Okay? So you might get some passage, you know, this is also in demo video, so I won't go into it too much, that talks about, say, um, I don't know, crab nebulas or something random like that. Or maybe something about like um, looking at laminar blood flow. Now you may have heard those terms, but the amount we actually need to know is very, very minimal. So if they throw some fancy equation up there to intimidate you, this is key. It's not only key because we have this short time frame, but this is in general how we approach the MCAT in any one of our courses. Okay, so say they give you some fancy equation, you know, pseudo fancy that look like this, and they start blabbing about something like blood flow, and they give you a bunch of junk. It's not your job to know this stuff beforehand, but everybody always ends up, for some reason, thinking it, it is, right? You think, oh my gosh, I haven't studied enough. Here's a topic I should be more comfortable with. That couldn't be further from the truth. It's not your job to know that. It's your job to sit here, look at this stuff, and go, I really don't know what's going on. But I get from the passage, oh, I get it. Something about like the bigger the radius of the blood vessel is, right? Uh, then I guess the, the greater the velocity of the fluid. Maybe something like that. So you get the certain basic relationships, and then you use basic science. So maybe you'll do something like a continuity equation, right? Where you can link, link say, velocity to cross-sectional area. Maybe it calls upon you to you know, tie this basic fact into the passage, or to use that basic fact when approaching problems from the passage, OK? Uh, maybe you'll do some Bernoulli's. Maybe you'll do some basic pressure stuff. You know, we'll talk a lot about that in person. But for right now, to optimize your study time, because the whole point is for you to do the best you possibly can, go with simple ideas. Trust it, because we don't even have enough time to do any random stuff, right? So focus on simple ideas, go through that bio, make sure you're comfortable with the basic principles, uh, and then we'll do as much as we possibly can in person. Okay? So no stress, right? Just uh, take your time, try to keep up with work, and we can totally do it. Okay? One thing I do want to say, though, is um, this is non MCAT related at all, in the sense that like, you're never going to get a problem like this on the MCAT, but I kind of want to show you their sort of thinking in a way. Okay? So a microcosm of the way the test works. Okay, let's say I've got a square, and let's say the square has an area you know what? Let's do this. Let's inscribe this square inside this circle. Okay? So it's touching the circle, those four points, and that is a square, and it's inside a circle. Okay? And the circle has some radius. Okay, some unknown radius. Okay, and let's say we also then draw that too well. Have this circle inscribed within a square. So this is another square, okay? And let's say I tell you that the area of the outside square is an area of, say, I don't know, 50. So the area of the entire big square is 50, okay? That square is hit by this circle in four spots, right? So it's inscribed. And then inside that circle, inscribed within it, is another square. And I want you to tell me what is the area of the inner square, okay? So I know it's been a while since you've done this stupid geo stuff, but just give it a try. Try, a try this out, or at least tell me how you would do it. Okay? All right, let's talk about this really briefly. And, uh, so what is the point of this? The point is to show you, if I had a passage in time, we could definitely show you what I mean. But this little problem kind of gives you a feel for what the test is like. It tests basic principles, but in an environment that's not that familiar. And one of the, I call it a mistake. One of the biggest mistakes I think people make is they're too smart for this. They overthink it. Okay? Or they approach this in a laborious way. So what I mean is this, like the standard geeky thing to do would be, okay, if this square has an area of 50, 
then the length of each side of the square must be something like square root of 50, because side times side gives you the area, right? And it's a square. Then you start thinking stuff like, well, I think the length of the side of, a square, of the square is the same as the diagonal of this, I'm sorry, diameter of this circle. So the circle has a diameter of what? Root 50, right? Which means, okay, I guess I could do other stuff, which I guess means that the diameter of the circle is also the diagonal of that square. I'm already getting confused, right? There's just a bunch of junk here. There's something about right triangles and junk like that, and that's just not the way to do it, okay? You could totally do that, and that's what a lot of people, that's a, the way a lot of people approach the MCAT, but it's not even designed that way. If they wanted to test that, they would do a problem where you couldn't take a shortcut like what we're about to do, okay? So let's think about this. So if they actually wanted you to work through it by brute force, they would design the problem to be that way, but that's not what they did, or at least that's not what I did in this problem. Okay, so let's look at that same problem, uh, but from a different perspective, okay? So let's try being mellow about it. So we keep that outside square where it was. Let's keep this circle where it was, too. But now I'm going to do this. Do you remember how the inner square used to sit <laughs> roughly like that? And do you remember the point is this circle must be, the square must be touch, touching that circle, right? If I take this sucker and I rotate him, I don't really change anything. So what's the thinking that's going to lead me to this? I go simple principles first. First, I know there are four points of tangency here. And I know I've got four more points. That's a lot to work with. It'd be much easier if I can make them somehow coincide. But that's okay, because if I take the square and I rotate him, I don't change anything, right? The area is still the same. Everything remains the same. Okay. But now, remember, the square is touching the circle. So I keep him touching the circle and I rotate him around till he does this. Oops. Yeah, that didn't help much. My bad. Okay, good enough. Okay, so do you guys agree? Same setup, same everything. But now I keep it very mellow, or try to at least, and I say, okay, let's cut this guy into quadrants. And let's see what's going on in one quadrant. Do you agree, without doing any serious math, this guy cuts this, this whole little mini square over here in half. So this area right in here is half of this total area. Does everybody agree? So if that's true for this quadrant, it's true for this one. This is half of that. This is half of that. And this is half of that, right? Which means the pink square has to be half the area of the big square. And if the big square happened to be 50, then the pink square must be 25. Okay. Uh, again, we'll never see math on the MCAT, at least not like this. But this carries the point I want to make, which is this. It's simple principles. In fact, in a very mellow way, you can solve this problem, right? but it's hidden in all this junk where it looks more complicated than it is. And if you go with the uber geek reflex, which is to start to compute, yeah, maybe you can get the right answer, totally fine, but there are much easier ways to do that. And, the test, and this isn't a gimmick, this is the way the test is set up. It's set up like this on purpose, so they, they see if you can take simple principles, apply them in unfamiliar settings, and get easy answers, okay? So hopefully we'll have plenty of time to work on that. I try to set the schedule up so we can do more workshops in person, um, more so than last year, because although the video to internet stuff we're gonna do is great, I still think in person is best, okay? So um, anyway, give the homework a try. Look at those videos if you get a chance. And if you have any questions, just let me know. So, so good luck, and we'll see you guys in December.